Hello. Hi. Today I have beautiful Daniela Schutt with me and I'm lucky enough to be in her apartment here in Sweden where she has a studio of uh, for yoga. And uh, Daniela is a renowned yoga teacher here in Sweden. Uh, we met in Goa a few years ago. We calculate it's going to be seven years now. And I'm so excited as she's coming to Poland to have a beautiful workshop up with Fascia. So without further ado, I'm so excited to present you Daniela. Daniela, how are you? I'm great, thank you. So the first question, what do you have today for breakfast? Bullet coffee, bulletproof coffee. All right. Prepared Sounds. by Kasha. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delicious. But I'm sure that's not, not the only thing. Do you plan to have something delicious after? Yeah, it's gonna be porridge. My my top favorite oat porridge. Okay, beautiful. And a fluffy egg. Beautiful. <laughs> um, Daniela, so if you can tell me far back about your story, how you started uh, yoga and how the yoga came about into your life. Oh, actually it starts with a sad story, but... Um... Like 20 years ago, I was abused and I got a bad injury into my back. And I was uh, in rehab for quite a while, practicing and doing like gym work to keep the pain off my back. And then I ran into a yoga class and I realized that going to the gym, I couldn't keep the pain off more than 24 hours. And with yoga, I kept the pain off for a few days, even a week. And then I just dove into the yoga cup. Wow. Sounds incredible. So how many years it's going to be now? Yeah, it's coming up on 20. Wow. So it's been with you for pretty much yeah, half my life. <laughs> half of your life. It's incredible. Yeah. And I know you've been traveling, uh, but now you're uh, in Sweden, like that's your home and base. And if you can tell me a little bit about your studio and what you're bringing into the studio uh, here in Sweden. Well, uh, for me, it, I have like two main interests. One of them is stress because of my own experience with PTSD and stress and how it works in the body and how it can stay in the body and why it doesn't go away from the body and the muscles and how do you make it go away or how do you integrate uh, the stress um, from your body to your emotions and heal. And I think the most important thing is that I realized I was not the only one who was stressed. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> when I started right teaching, I realized that, oh, Jesus, everyone is stressed. Everyone is experiencing this. And I, I realized I have so much to give them and teach them. And I love diving into the science. And I want my students to understand and the physiology behind it. So I don't just teach one pranayama. I want to teach them how it works in the nervous system and why. And I want them to understand their own system. Because also then my students come back and they say like, so if it works like this and this, it should be good if I do this. Yeah, do it. It's not, I don't like rules. Oh, no, it's the same like you. Wow. You don't like the rules, like yoga. You do this or you don't do that. And do, do it that this sounds, way only. Uh, that sounds quite revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for people who are listening, and um, if you can tell them a little bit more about PTSD, uh, because I presume not everyone are familiar with that. Oh, so PTSD is more or less, uh, you can have a tr stressful trauma. Like people who have been to the war or experienced a stressful, traumatic situation. And you don't heal it. Um, then you just keep it in your body and it can really make you crippled. It can make you almost like you're feeling like you're handicapped. And I, I didn't find much help from, from the medical system they don't really have a system to help people and uh, what they gave me was like take valium that was the only solution they had um, mm. and i've been really into the 
into reception and I'm thinking that also for me I realized doing yoga I didn't start doing yoga to heal my PTSD I started to heal my back but then I realized that in some asanas I just got flooded with emotions and I could actually really really feel that Jesus this emotion is in this part of the body this muscle is it sitting in the muscle? Where is it? Is the emotion still there in my body? Uh, and then um, it's almost like we we seal our emotions with an armor around mm. it. So I think everyone can feel it. If you're sad, even if it's just that you're scared because you didn't bring do your homework when you were a little child and you come to your teacher... And you want to cry, but you don't want to cry in front of the class. So you tense your body. So we can tense up to seal the emotion. So the emotion don't get out. Wouldn't you agree? Mm. Yeah? Yes. So there's a completely direct correlation between the stress and emotions. And then the body, because the body keeps and stores the emotions that creates a little bit more stress or it doesn't allow the stress to heal on move on is am i right yeah yeah yeah. and you don't heal it you seal it you seal it in an armor of muscles your muscle tends up and then maybe you don't realize it but you keep on going on like that and years after years after years and as soon as you go to yoga class and you move and you need to stretch and open up a part of the body and breathe at the same time because the first thing that seals up is your breathing then the emotions leak out because you take away the armor Mm -hmm. so you just saying like there can be a stress caused from trauma um as emotion and trapped in your body but i'm sure there's also um other forms of stress yeah. or the stress that is day to day. Not everyone goes through trauma, but still benefit from that. Um, we don't, am I correct? We only have one stress system. So we have the body has one way to react. It doesn't matter. Like we, we were built this nervous system of fight and flight and survival was built like millions of years ago, uh, ago. So the system was built for, Imagine the savanna. Mm -hmm. So the system was built for like a lion is hunting you, you know, (laughs) that's life or death. But nowadays it's like, I have to pick up the children and I have to do this work and I have to send and answer all these emails. And then I have to do my tax returns and I have to, it's all in your head. But the only way the body can react to it is almost as if it was a lion. We only have one stress system. It's it's just the level. Mm. So with the stress we have today, it's usually a stress in the mind, but the body and the stress system cannot separate. What's happening in your mind is happening as if it was real. What you think is what you experience. So that just really helps us to release it and deal with it. Mm. So um, you're a yogi, but... Do you, why yoga? Can we just go and do a stress release in the different way? Or yoga is, is the medium. What's your thoughts I think about this? There are like millions of ways to heaven. All always leads to Rome. So I think everyone can find their own way. It's just um I think the only main part is like you have to go through the body. We are we are at, in Sweden we have a word um and if I would translate it, I think it would be headlings. Like, you know, the little children, when they start drawing, they draw a person. It's just one head and the arms and the legs are attached directly to the head. And I think we are like that. We are walking around and we are our minds instead of being our bodies. I love what you're saying. That's why I brought it up. Because for some people, they think, oh, yoga is just a stretch or I'm doing some um posture like a warrior or you know just to look pretty like from a magazine whereas you're saying you can use yoga for that stress relief to help and navigate the whole life and you don't have to put Mm. yourself in a pretzel so that's why i want to make it clear that you're in a way 
reframing the word yoga. Yoga is something that for some people can mean certain things, but just to make it clear that yoga in your sense of what you're talking about is more the way to reconnect with the body. Yeah. So could you say instead of yoga, say like body connection or body work or am I correct? Yeah, or sensing. Sensing. Okay, that's interesting word. If you can tell us a little bit more about that. So after many, many years, I realized what I'm doing is, well, it's yoga or like, um, we need, people need words to understand what we're talking about. And after a while, I realized that, ah, I actually built um, building blocks to take you there. Uh, and instead of writing yoga on my schedule for my students to come, now I write sensing yoga because it's actually just sensing inwards, being body now, um, feeling and exploring and learning from your body instead of from I, I love I love what you're saying. It's just because I can relate to it hundred percent. I'm teaching in Poland. I have also my students and regular classes. And that's why I wanted to bring that to the surface, the word yoga that through centuries and for the last few years, it's been really going through transformation. The the word the way we approach it, it became more mainstream. It mm -hmm. went through a phase where it became hip. And then I think it lost it a little bit, the depth of it. And then some people, the minute they see yoga, you have like different reaction. The, so there's a lot of uh, people's ideas about the word even <laughs> yoga, what they have. They think, oh, I'm going to be sweating on mat. Another person thinks, I'm just going to lie down and relax there. And... Um, so much happens. So I just want to like reframe that actually we're using the term yoga, so it's close to us and um, that's what people refer to. But at the end of the day, it ha it, what it means is like reconnecting with your body. And mm -hmm. I that's why I want to make it clear. So for a person who has like s just stripping the ideas around it, just coming fresh and experiencing the word yoga what yoga really is for them from that fresh perspective like what you said is stress relief um sense in the body so what would you say is the um, most correct description if you take the word yoga what would it be what you're offering to your students well actually like patanjali says joke it means bringing together you need to bring together your mind and your body. We cannot be only in our bodies. I usually say to my students, like, we are three. We are our mind, our emotions, and our body. And we need to bring together all three of them. You know, some people, they are in their bodies only. And that doesn't really work because then they can't calculate what's going to be correct mm. or not, you know. And then some people, they are only in their emotions and they just react to any emotion that just comes to them. So they are going up or down. They are being tossed around, whatever their emotions are leading them. And then you have people that are only in their minds and they can't understand other people's emotions or their own emotions or feel their bodies. So wherever you are, if you're stuck in one of them, you're not going to be happy. That's beautiful what you're saying. So to make us whole and happy. We need all three. Yeah, all good things are three, aren't they? <laughs> it's beautiful because at the end of the day, it's about being happy, living full life. That's what I often say to people, why I'm doing what I'm doing, combining yoga, essentials, just being more mindful. Mm -hmm. um, it's to be happy, full, live more fulfilled life and just enjoy yeah. it. So who doesn't want that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's beautiful. And... Uh, coming back to the workshop, uh, which you offer also in Poland is, and now you're starting to travel uh, with, with what you offer as expanding it from Sweden to other countries. I'm so fortunate to have you soon in Poland. Um, the word fascia appears and for some people it's still like a mystery. If you can put light on fascia, what it is, um, yeah. So fascia is... Um... Is everywhere in the body. If you open up a chicken and you want to cook a chicken for yogis who eat meat, <laughs> or if you did it before uh, in your life, uh, you will see that film around the muscle in the chicken. 
it's like a sheet. Uh, and it's not only around the muscles, it goes within the muscles. So each muscle fiber is within a tube of fascia. And then those tubes are collected together within another tube of fascia. And all those are together to form the muscles. And then the tendons, they are also fascia. And so uh, everything wrapping around your blood, um, uh, your arteries, that's fascia. And all your organs, they are hanging in threads of fascia. And we used to just dissect bodies and say, well, that's just a wrapping. It's, it doesn't have a function. But it does. It's a part. It's a main part of our immune system. It's a main communication part, like where we get a lot of our sensory system, and so we um, actually know where our body is, like the interoception and proprioception. So you know where your joints are, and so it's it's super exciting um, to learn about the fascia and what it does and how do you keep your fascia healthy. Is it affected by how you eat, how you move, or how you don't move? And how do you want to shape your body? Uh, and how can you shape the fascia? From what you think, can I, is it correct to say that I'm just a walking fascia? <laughs> like pretty yeah, much. You, you are. Fascia is a large part of your body. Um, In percentage? Oh, I don't know. Um, I, I know... <laughs> I wrote it down, but I don't remember. I think it's, you sh you, I shouldn't say it because then maybe I will be wrong, but I think maybe even up to 20%. Wow. Okay, so you're saying it's like responsible for so many functions. So it's also so important to be happy, healthy, look into your fascia, look after oh. your fascia. And you also use very interesting word interoception. Also, some people might not be familiar to that if you can explain what interoception is that's your ability to sense inwards like if you close your eyes right now can you feel your heart beat hmm i'm can doing you? it as daniela speaks to me and actually it involves a lot of focus like the quietness yeah. it's a bit like meditation to me yeah and also immediately it took you away from your mind Mm. didn't you notice that's like, true you were thinking and then just in one second you can switch from mind to body but also as you said mind is so important so in one way we want to switch off the mind but on the other hand we really look after like our mind what functions the mind then what keeps the mind ticking or what? no <laughs> like you, you you said um that we also need to look after the mind, but sometimes you just said, like, we want to switch off the mind. So what's happening there? Oh, I had a yoga teacher who said something very good to me. He said, like, you know, we yogis, like, in the, the Western world, we say, like, I think, therefore, I am, you know, like, um, we are our minds. This is all we are, you know, the Western... Um, uh, research society has been diving deeply into the minds of people like that's what we are uh, and this yoga teacher said to me like if you really 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 feel deeply you will you I think most people will sense it that you are something else there is someone who can watch the mind you can watch your own thoughts can't you mm. so you are something else and he said you are a creative force you are a creative force and this creativity can manifest things in this world. So you need to use your mind for that. So instead of having a mind that is uh, a mind that is like a machine that takes over your life, because I think many people can, uh, can, agree on they had nights when they were in the bed and the mind it's going like T -t 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 -t, and you can't shut it up and sometimes you're worrying about things and the mind just keeps worrying about this and you just want to tell your mind shut up please just stop and you, you don't have control over it um, and the objective is to feel and connect to your creative force and feel that you are that and train your mind to Think when you wanted to think. 
to shut up when you wanted to shut up and focus ah. on what you wanted to focus on when you wanted to focus on this. So you need to actually exercise your mind and practice to make it more that, like you train your dog that's what they say it's like train your mind a monkey mind you can train it yeah but for me it's beautiful because it's it just shows you you can do it no matter where you are you have a power start where you are and you have a power to change it but mm. also be patient like to a dog i like that courage or a monkey like you don't yeah expect the dog to run now and do exactly what you want on the first session you give it time you look after it and you spend an intent um, towards it and then you see beautiful results yeah because mind it is that creative force i love what you're saying it's it's great so it's the same with emotions and it's the same with body so in a way that essence within you is a little trainer who trains body mind and Emotions, but at the same time, it creates that wholeness and connection with it. That. Yeah, so you need to connect all three. Yeah. I love it. So back to the workshop. If you can tell a person what can they next, a, who is directed the workshop to, so one thing, and then what they can expect while, while they're there. Okay, so it's going to be for anyone. You don't have to have any experience or knowledge about medicine or stuff like that. It's going to be very, very easy to understand and grounding. Uh, uh, really basics but basics with good knowledge that everyone can use and you're going to have a more clear image of what fascia is in your body and how you can use it and why you should take care of it and I think yeah it's the workshop is called fascia facts so it's just going to be easy pointers but really interesting point. It's going to make you go like, aha, aha, aha. I can do that. I can oh, it's have... amazing. It sounds yeah. absolutely fascinating. So <clears throat> it's also like practical and um, some facts or some theory. Yeah. And then we are going to do, we're going to end off with um, a yoga fascia session, like practical, uh, really relaxing, getting into your body because uh, so we will get in all this interception, how it helps you connect to your body at the end. So you're going to get half theory, half practice. Oh, it's amazing. It sounds going to be so, lovely. I'm so excited to be part of it. Like it's, it's, it sounds incredible because you're sharing <clears throat> years of your own practice knowledge, both on the theory and your went through walked and talk every single word you're teaching you went through this post-traumatic stress you dealt with so many emotions trapped within your body and you bring bringing out that to the world it's so beautiful and i want to mm. honor you for that to share it to be so open and open for that vulnerability to share with others because i know that's also it's not always easy you can heal yourself but share it to the world and bring it forward also as a course that's like another step, like you're stepping into, uh, you stepped up into that. So again, I'm so privileged to have you. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And as we were speaking, uh, we we're just drinking our coffee and also there surrounds us oils because I'm in Sweden too. I was here with the uh, aromatherapy course. And if you can tell a little bit about your experience with essential oils, because when I refer to oils, I mean essential is the gifts of the earth, the nature. Um, and now I can see you uh, smelling, oh, smelling joy. And um, which blend have you chosen this morning and your journey with oils? I have chosen joy. And it really, like this morning, I woke up just feeling joy. And then I got up to the kitchen and there was a bottle with essential oil saying joy on it. <laughs> and I put it on my wrist and I just, and I'm smelling it right now. And it just really, 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 when I inhale a sense, I can feel it bubble in my body. And this one really bubbles joy. I really feel joy when I'm smelling it. And what you have taught me, because I haven't only been on your workshops, I've been living with you. 
uh, that you bring out the oils all the time for any occasion like it could be like for drinking something there's a drop in the coffee the yesterday you put a drop of rose in our yogurt berry sauce together with the brownie and it just it it was amazing just you can use the oils for anything for uh to have your hormonal balance to balance your mind and your body so you're doing exactly the same thing as i do but you do it and you help and you reinforce it with all the essential oils it's just amazing it's just the top level of everything. oh it's it's beautiful to hear so thank you thank you so much because whoever is listening the joy blend is the citrus blend and i just developed like chakra blends uh joy is the sacral chakra it brings the creativity and that's our place where we connect to our joy of everything in life whether it's going for a walk and just experiencing joy whether it's having a beautiful connection with your friend it's a joy or connecting to yourself and sensing within the body and one of the reasons why I'm bringing the oils up because I'm just giving you um, whoever is listening the heads up about our, the beautiful workshop we're working currently with Daniela which will be sensing and connecting to uh, bringing let's say both of our gifts and experiences into the table and creating something very very special and dear to us so it's still in a creation process it's me and Daniela both bringing the creativity and joys within us and the experience we have through years both as yoga teachers people being on our own spiritual journey healing journey wellness journey and we're bringing it together um, to create something really special uh, sense and body uh, that's that will be the beautiful uh, workshop uh, slash teacher training course so I just will leave on that because as I said it's still we're bringing all the bits together and we're yoking we're joining together so one of the reasons why I'm here and we are also working on creating framework for a framework for um, our our workshop and it's beautiful now to observe because uh, coming back to what you said Daniela we have this beautiful body we have mind and emotions and we're at the moment using all of that we are moving our body and we are feeling it everything we sense in within our body we're using a mind to create that framework for our workshop because it needs some structure so it can't just be a flowy, oh yeah, let's do this and this and that. It has to have a beautiful uh, structure. And also emotions. Emotions are what make us humans. And it's such a significant part of being alive and experiencing everything within the life through our emotions. And I mean the beautiful emotions of love, joy, but also connecting to the traumatic experiences because they're the most amazing teachers um, of us. And we wouldn't know what love is and joy without the fear. We wouldn't know the courage without the fear. We wouldn't know the joy without the sadness. So it's like yin, yang, darkness, light. So I will leave on that because there is a lot of exciting It's uh, going to thoughts. be amazing. Really, really amazing. Yes, and it's great to be <laughs> excited about the work we're doing. So it's such a beautiful thing. And just to finish um, finish on that, what's your, because I know some people are very fascinated about people who are on their own journey, what's your top tip for a person who wants to start their journey and share that? To start their journey to, to heal? To... To, to heal, to connect with mind, body and emotion. I would start with the body, everything begins in the body start feeling and sensing your body in any way you can maybe you just buy a tennis ball and in the morning or in the evening or any time during the day just move that ball around your body and see if you can sense how the body feels you will be amazed that parts of your body are actually crying 
they're in so much pain, but they are quiet pain. They don't tell you during the day. They haven't maybe been telling you that they are working their ass off for like the last decades. Um, so just give them the attention that they need. And you will also find like, I call them blind spots, sleeping parts that you have disconnected with. Oh, it's so fascinating because so whoever is listening and they want to experience what we're talking about because it's all about experience just sense in your body you can listen to your close your eyes listen to your heartbeat if you have essentials around you just put a job on your hand take a nice long deep breath you're experiencing sensing the body sense opening up to that part within you so if you want to just start something now, right now, wherever you are, if whether you're sitting on a train or whether you're sitting at home or you're walking, just, you can't start it right this second. Stop, close your eyes, deep breath, listen to your heart and experience the magic. Yeah, and use your senses. That's why the essential oils are such amazing ways to bring you into your body and emotions. Because it's like, this is our sensory system. We have our smell, our sight, our uh, feeling of the skin and the muscles. Uh, so they just enhance it. It's a really good way to just switch. Just like I told you to switch to your heart and feel your heartbeat. The oils help you switch. So it's, it's really enhancing everything. It's just moves you into that sensory system away from your mind into your body and sensory system it's perfect oh, it's and so that's beautiful. why the workshop is going to be amazing because it's just going to be like many worlds bringing you into your body and healing like we heal our emotions and our trauma and our stress through our body not through our mind and i think uh, all psychologists they know this now uh, that you don't get results from talking about a problem. It needs to be connected with your emotions and your body to get results. And yes, it's, it's my... It's amazing what you're saying. It's, it's exactly, it's sensing and bring it forward. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, Daniela, so much. It's been such a joy and pleasure and honor to have you um, today. And so kind to have me here in Sweden. I'm very excited about having you in Poland. And stay tuned. So whoever is listening, um, I'm so excited. There's so much brewing and so much exciting projects uh, coming forward to life. And stay tuned. So have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you, Kasia. Bye, everyone.